Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day. As you can see right here, we have some new Mazda Racing Sim products here. But today we are going to be taking a look at the new R9 wheelbase that they have just released. The big thank you to Mazda Racing for sending this stuff out to me to take a look at it, unbox it, and give you my guys and my impressions on it. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the obviously the outside of the box before we get into this. So it does show on the side that there are two different versions you can get. There's a white and blue cased one and a black cased one. This is the black cased one that Mazda Racing sent out to me. So we're going to be unboxing this, taking a look at it for the first time here. And once again, a big thank you to Mazda Racing for sending this stuff out to me to take a look at it and uh, give you guys my impressions and my feeling on it. Because you guys know I've been, I ran Logic G920 and now I have a Club Sport 2.5, which is belt drive. And now we are going into the direct drive world. And this is Mazda's newest R9 wheelbase, um, nine being nine new meters worth of force. So it's definitely, you know, a very amazing looking base on the box. So let's actually get into it and get this thing open and see what we got inside this box and see where we are with this new R9 wheelbase. I'm gonna try and not hit the microphone over there. All right, so first thing, ooh, we got, we got a bunch of Mazda racing stickers. That's awesome. And uh, of course we have our user manual and a bunch of, like a lot of Mazda racing stickers actually that's pretty sweet definitely gonna have to put some of those on my chair and everything we're gonna take this user manual and we're gonna put this aside because we may actually need that I'm not sure what these cardboard pieces are we're gonna chuck those so definitely sweet to get some stickers and things like that in the box so right off the top of the box what we have here is the power cord which actually I'm very intrigued about because it doesn't have a giant power brick like my Fanatec does. So it'll be nice for like cable management and things of that nature. It's just got a, you know, quick power, a little power switch there. So this is actually really cool that it doesn't have a massive power brick. So very excited to see how I can get good cable management with that. Set that aside over there. And then of course we have on, in the box as well. If I can get my fingers to work with this, there we go. We have the USB connection for the PC. It's just a standard connection. It does look like it's a standard plug, like everything, all wheelbases I know. I think even my Fanatec has this type of plug in there. So definitely uh, very good that it's kind of universal because it seems like I can maybe use the longer one that I have, maybe already wired in and put on my Fanatec that's plugged into the PC. So we're going to see if that, once we get it hooked up to the rig, if I can actually use another one or, you know, if we can just wire this one in too. So we're going to put, obviously, this stuff aside. We're going to put those cables aside a little bit. And now we get into the fun stuff. We get into some really awesome packaging, actually. Some very thick packaging and stuff like that. So there is a power brick. I was incorrect. So there's a power brick. I was wrong. A really, actually, nice power brick. It looks like, so it looks like the power brick does have... Uh, lights that light up and stuff like that. We'll get more into that once I actually get this thing plugged in. So I was wrong in the beginning. So there's a power brick. Like I had no idea what was in this box. So this is pretty awesome. So like I said, if this lights up, that's pretty sweet. You can actually put that someplace. So there's a big power brick. About the same size as my Fanatec one. So not a big deal. And then we get into <laughs> what we've all wanted to see. And it comes in this nice, oh, let me get out of here. I'm gonna put this box aside. So, as you can see, the size of this is about two hands. It's not massively large. Like, this is the case that you can kind of see in here. And I'm actually very excited that this is as small as it is. When I got the box, I was like, there's no way there's a wheelbase in here. But there's actually a wheelbase in here. So, Really nice bag, really nice like silk bag with the Mazda Racing logo on it, and uh, the inside of it is actually uh, some nice like Swedish felt. So the moment that everybody and myself have been waiting for is taking this new R9 wheelbase out of the bag and off the rip. This is incredibly small. 
that's actually really, really small, but I mean, it's a direct drive, which means it's, all it is is a motor inside. So this is incredibly awesome to see, I'm trying to not get the glare. Something this small, I mean, it's not that big. I love the styling of it and the, you know, aircraft grade aluminum and the Mazda on the sides. It looks like heat sinks and stuff like that. So this base for like sake of size, let me go grab something so we can get gauge size here. So for sake of size, this is a 350 millimeter energy innovations wheel. The Mazda racing base for the R9 can fit inside of a 350 millimeter deep dish energy innovations wheel. So that just goes to show you how small this actually is, which is going to make it really nice when you actually put it onto a rig and things like that. So let's take a look at some of the cool things that I'm super interested in looking at. See if I can get it without some glare right there. As you can see, there's no pins. There's absolutely no pins on this because it has zero latency Bluetooth technology that Mazda Racing has. So there's a Bluetooth receiver inside the base as well as a Bluetooth receiver inside the rim, which we'll get in more in another episode. But no physical pins like my Fanatec. So there's no physical pins that are gonna cause it to like break when it's rotating and spinning like that. And you know, so that is something I'm very interested to know about with the zero latency, how zero latency it actually is. So spinning like the motor, it's, it's actually very quiet. It's very nice, very smooth. And you know, you don't really feel much resistance on it. Now, once it's actually powered in, then we'll actually be able to tell. But just take a second to like, look at the quality of this, the aircraft grade aluminum and everything like that. Now, you know, of course on the back you have, let's see if I can't get, come on camera, focus. You have plugins for the meter, the emergency stop, the USB there, and you have a power button on the back. So you don't have to worry about that power switch. You can just power down through the back, um, which is really nice that there's just a quick little button. And then of course on the bottom, gonna see how how well this actually screws in because we have four screws four screw for my wheelbase now is this gonna line up or am I gonna throw holes into my energy innovations base or not that's something I'm gonna have to look once we put it on the rig and actually you know go into taking a look now one other thing is this case is closed there's no vents these are just aesthetics I believe with the heat sinks on the side, I believe they're just there for aesthetic purposes. I could be wrong. Um, I'll double check with that. But so inside here is their own smart temperature system. It's a built-in temperature sensor that monitors the temperature and chips in real time to ensure like stable operating temperatures and stuff like that. So very curious how that works. Not really sure. Um, but once we get it on there and we start driving this, you know, running this base and putting it through its paces with racing and drifting and stuff like that will really be able to tell if this thing heats up or not. So definitely going to be putting it through its paces and kind of torture testing it. But I really like what they did with the output shaft for the base. It's nice and smooth and sleek. And, you know, like I said, it it's very, very robust, but small at the same time. So once we actually get this onto the rig, so one thing I didn't know is obviously the whole casing is aluminum. Now the back plate, back plate is plastic um, or, you know, polymer, which is probably because, you know, it has all the plugs in and everything like that. So it's definitely, you know, very sturdy. But the fact that this whole thing, this thing actually weighs a good good amount. I wish, um, I'll probably actually put it on a scale and actually see how much this thing actually weighs because it is quite heavy, but it is just like a big motor inside. So it's definitely very intriguing how small this is, but how heavy it is because it feels super strong and super durable. And it's one thing, you know, to have, you know, a wheelbase that's massively large, but 
is not that structurally sound. Like say my D920, it's very big, it's plastic. This is small, it's heavy because it's made of aircraft grade aluminum. So it's definitely gonna hold up. Now, like I said, there's no vents on this. I don't see any vents. So definitely gonna be putting it through its paces and see what that smart temperature system does and see if this thing overheats. Maybe uh, I may run like a Matsuri for drifting, you know, where it's constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and kind of torture testing this thing to see if it actually overheats or if I feel any difference in feedback, if I lose feedback and stuff like that, because that would be something I would be very interested to find out if I lose feedback or if I if never notice it. So I feel like this thing's gonna be very quiet and very uh, easily run. Now I can see right on the top, there is in pictures that I've seen, is a, uh, a blue like LED. I'm not sure how bright that's gonna be. You may have to, you know, or if you're even gonna see it when you have the rim on. But this zero latency, you know, quick release thing is something I'm super, super excited to look at. Let's see if we can't get a really good close up of that. So as you can see, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing there. There's just some, you know, brass looks like contact points. So on the inside of the quick release of the wheel, I'm sure there's something that just barely touches on top of that, which powers the rim and gives you the ability to not have batteries in a wheel or anything like that. But if you guys remember my Fantasec, I broke the pins. When I was taking the wheel on and off, I broke the pins and had to repin my Fantasec because my rim broke pins. This is gonna cause no breaking of pins. And because it's just a motor, there's nothing in there that's gonna be spinning around and breaking, you know, over time, which is actually gonna make this very good for longevity purposes. So, you know, the, the subtle stylings, like I said, with the, you know, with the Mazda on the side, this thing's actually pretty beefy. I'm more, I don't wanna drop it. Uh, the Mazda racing on the side, and of course the Mazda racing on the back. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I can't thank Mazda Racing enough for giving me the chance and um, partnering up with me and sending me this stuff so I can show you this because I'm super excited to be going into a direct drive base because you guys know I ran my Logitech G920 for years. Then I was on, now I'm on my club sport. Now we got this Mazda Racing base and I just, I still can't get over how small it is, how small compact it is. And the fact that this is a nine Newton meter base now it's very similar styling and compactness as Fanatec CSLDD but CSLDD is actually only eight newton meters with the power brick so this is a little bit more powerful you don't have to worry about pins breaking which is very intriguing so definitely going to be curious how that zero latency works once we actually get it on the rig and start working with the you know timing maybe timing how quickly the paddle shifters work and stuff like that so it's super intriguing with that technology i'm surprised a lot of places don't have it i think other manufacturer wheelbases might um i'm not 100 percent sure if like sim magic or anything like them have that stuff um i know fanatec does not so it's definitely uh very intriguing with that and you know I mean, this is sweet. They give you like nice sweet bags and everything like that. And of course stickers, you know, anytime you get something cool, you'll want some stickers. So we got stickers. Now I want to go back to this box real quick and see. I don't think, actually, where is it? There it is. Okay. I, I hear it. So I forgot to grab this. So they do give you mounting hardware for the bottom. Because um, I was very curious because they look identical to, say, the Fanatec ones, just the standard screw. So they do give you four screws in the Allen key. I heard it rattling and I'm like wondering, I'm like, what's the thread pitch on the bottom? So they do give you hardware for it. So if you have a base, you can mount it. Now they do have an optional um, bracket that bolts to this if you want to put it onto a table or something like that. So, But hopefully this will line up at least... I'm going to want all four because this is direct drive to line up on my um, NRG base to make sure that, you know, it stays sturdy. We're going to actually lay that on that. 
So once again, a big thank you to Mazda Racing for, you know, giving me the opportunity and sending this out to me and letting me, you know, partner up with them and do this. You know, Mazda Racing was just announced in ESDA as one of their sponsors for the ESDA season. So it's, you know, going to be going into ESDA season this year with this nice base, with this wheel. But that's for another video. We're going to be taking that wheel out, unboxing it, taking a look at it, and going full into that rim and seeing all the fun things that that rim has. When we pair it to this, definitely going to be super excited. Like I said, we're going to be torture testing this thing, I would say, to make sure and see how the heating system works. How it works with drifting. How it works with racing. Because you guys know I'm a big, avid drifter. But I also do racing, so... You know, it's going to be very curious for me, the change between my club sport to this. So, for wrap this unboxing video out, give you guys my full honest impressions of the base in itself. I love the small compact design. I love the subtle stylings. I love how it just is a compact look and that, you know, the zero latency, the no pins is going to be major for me because I'm super super avid about things breaking and the longevity of things so this coming in at I believe it's 450 459 US is actually a very reasonable market price um it's very very nice and I believe um I believe they are one of the only ones that I know that are around this price range at that newton meter. So nine newton meters is definitely a huge gain because I was gonna do a CSL DD because my buddy has a CSL uh, DD, um, but it was not much better than my club sport other than the fact it was a direct drive. This is going to be much nicer than my direct drive with precision and stuff like that. And you know, the fact that I don't have to worry about things breaking and that, you know, it's going to be so nice with the quick release system that they have designed with this base and the rims and all of their bases, actually. It's super aggressive and super nice. So once again, a big thank you to Mazda Racing. We're going to get this thing put on my sim rig and we're going to be going torch test. But before that, we're going to do this and we're going to take a look at that rim in another episode. And then we're going to put it all on. We're going to go through setups and everything like that. So make sure you guys follow me. Um, all my links and everything will be in the description box below. The links where you can get this wheelbase will also be down below. And a big thank you to Mazda Racing again for sending this out to me so I can get this up on my rig and get it full going. So, as always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.